Hey there guys, so I'm back with another review of the most recent episode of The Mandalorian The Siege. Now the episode follows Din Djarin and the child, they head off back to Navarra to get repairs for the Razor Crest. Whilst that is happening, he has to help Grief and Kara blow up this Imperial base that's on the planet that should have a skeleton crew. Now the episode was directed by the one and only Grief Karga, aka Carl Weathers, or as I like to know him as, Apollo Creed. Now I thought this was going to be another filler episode, but I was wrong. I mean, this really, just like the last episode, this really pushed the story forward and we learn so much of Moff Gideon's intentions and there's some foreshadowing for the sequel trilogy like the First Order and Supreme Leader Snoke. Now this was another great episode in the series. I mean there's so much I really like. For one, they don't actually mention midichlorians, they say the M count and I don't think Star Wars in terms of Disney are going to say midichlorians anymore. But the, you kind of learn their intentions of why they wanted the child, they wanted his blood so, so they can do experiments. Um, I think it's believed they want to create their own kind of own version of the Jedi or something like that, or somehow lead into Supreme Leader Snoke or the Emperor. Um, there's a fun chase sequence that involves the Imperial Troop Transporter with some speeder bikes with the Scout Troopers. That was really fun, then they get the TIE Fighters and you think, oh my god, they're going to lose. Then suddenly the Razor Quest comes in, takes them out. That was a lot of fun. Baby Yoda, sorry, the child, has a lot more to do here. I mean, especially at the beginning, we have the red wire and blue wire. That was funny, and when he's still that boy's macaroons, and at the end he chucks it back out. That was great. Um, the Scout Troopers. Like, I'm not sure anyone's talking about this, but the one... There was, when the five scout troopers head off to chase them, there's like five that leaves the base, but only two, three out of five of them actually make it to the bottom of the hill. It's like those scout, the scout, the speeder bikes aren't designed for going downhill, which was just great. But yeah, somehow they were pros on speeder bikes, but when they shoot a blaster, I mean, they're crap. The other things I liked is the small moments when like at the beginning the child and the man are discussing they have to have they have to head back to Navarra and they're drinking but like Matt Din Djarin removes his helmet slightly just to have a drink and I just like that. So I'm hoping at some point after like the last episode when he learns about his heritage, I think at some points he's not gonna be so OCD about taking his helmet off. I mean I still think he's gonna keep it on, but I don't think there's going to be a time and a place when he has to take it off, and I like that. Um, the Dark Troopers, at the very end, when you have like Moff Gideon in that hallway, and you have all these like Dark Troopers or Black Troopers, I think they're Dark Troopers from an old video game back in like the 90s from the Legends, and that was great. So I think Moff Gideon is running out of manpower, because let's, because this is five years after Return of the Jedi, so this is pretty much just remis reminiscence of the Empire, so he has no choice but to use uh, Dark Troopers. It was great to see Captain Carson again from Episode 2, and he wants to do more, he wants to try and help out, but he wants to take control of the system. But also I think this episode does set up uh, Cara Dune's departure at some point, because we do learn a lot from her. I mean, she's originally from Alderaan, and if you're a Star Wars fan, you know what happened to Alderaan. But I think she won't die, of course, but I think she'll leave to work for the New Republic. My favourite line in this episode, and my god, as a Star Wars fan, it was just great. When uh, Mithroth is trying to deactivating the um, panels that like hold the lava together on the base, but when he gets on the platform, he realises there's no guardrail. <laughs> and if you're a Star Wars fan, and if you've seen like, the Star Destroyers and the Death Stars, there's so many platforms that don't have guardrails and it doesn't seem safe at all and I don't know why they can't just put one there. <laughs> it was just great. I mean, overall, this was a great episode. I mean, I can't give it a 10 because I feel like I've given every episode a 10 apart from episode 2, which was still good. I think this is like a nine, 8 or a 9. I mean, there's so much cool stuff to it. We get to see a different picture of... Navarra now and we do get to see a statue of IG-11 in the background in one of the shots. I do hope Carl Weathers directs another episode because this was great. So yeah, another great episode from another great series that I love.